Welcome to Geometry Nodes 101. In this session, we're going to look at the Raycast node. This is like one of my favorite nodes because it's just so powerful and so versatile as well. We're going to create a shrink wrap modifier this time by essentially casting rays towards an object and then using the hit positions. It's a nice, fun way of working, but I think it's a good demonstration for how you can use it. Let's start off by adding a plane just so that we have a container for our geometry nodes. And because I'm going to be working with multiple objects, I'm also going to pin this node tree. It just means I can add something like, I'll add a Suzanne, and you can see the node tree is still there, even though it's not the active object. I don't need my group input. I'm going to be using a separate grid, just so I can control the resolution in here. Let's go for like 100 by 100. And I will also make it a bit bigger, so 2 by 2. All right, let's have a look at the Raycast node. I'm going to make a little bit of space and add it in here. This is a node that scares beginners because it's huge and it's called Raycast and that just sounds very technical and confusing. However, it's so powerful and it's actually not that difficult to use. So I'm going to walk you through it and hopefully by the end of this you'll understand what all of the different options are and how you can use it, in this case for the shrink wrap. So it has a bunch of outputs but I'll get onto those in a moment. We're going to start off with our inputs. So we can set whether we are looking at floats or vectors and things like this. And this is specifically to do with attribute, like retransferring an attribute. So this is not necessarily something you need to do all the time. The node actually does a whole bunch of other stuff kind of by default. So we don't necessarily always need to transfer an attribute. We can just use the hit position, for example. Now, like the transfer attribute node and the proximity, geometry proximity, both of these are using a target geometry. And the target geometry is basically what we are hitting. An analogy for this would be if you are standing on a bridge shining a torch over the edge, the direction that you shine your torch is the ray direction. Okay, so in this case it's going vertically down. So if we shine our torch vertically down over the edge and we see whether or not it hits the road below, and if it does hit the road, we can mark that position that we were standing as a yes for is hit. And if it does not hit the road, for example, if it hits the verge or something like that, then we can say that it is not a hit. So we can basically map out a bunch of positions across that bridge where it is or is not a hit for that road below. Now the source position is where we're standing on that road. And this allows you to experiment a little bit as well. By default, it will just use the position of the vertex that you are casting from. But because it's a socket, you can also change this, right? You can use like noise textures or something like that to mess up the position. And the ray length is essentially how strong is your torch? How far does that light shine? So in this case, it's set to 100 meters vertically down. Let me simplify this a little bit by actually just drawing a point, a single point. So this point here is where we're standing on our imaginary bridge. And we are shining a light straight down. So it comes down like this until it hits the surface. So I can say at this point we have is hit and this hit position output is going to output the position at this point where we hit the surface. The hit normal similarly is going to output the normal direction from the surface at that point and the hit distance is going to be this distance in between the point where you're casting from to the position where that casting line hits. The attribute is where it gets a bit more interesting and allows you to do a little bit more sort of like an attribute transfer. Again, going back to the bridge analogy, you're looking over the bridge, shining your torch, and you can see on the floor some writing, right? That writing is like an attribute. The writing where you can see, for example, if it says like 21, that means that the attribute at that point where you are reading it is going to be 21. I know that's a very simplified analogy, but hopefully it'll just kind of set you up to work with this. And that attribute is where these come into play, right? So float is what kind of attribute you're transferring. And interpolated or nearest means that it's going to pick whether or not it interpolates the value at the position of the hit, or it takes the value from the nearest mesh element, normally like the corner or vertex. So for example, if you were doing position, this one at the nearest corner would be here. So it would actually transfer this, this value instead of the surface value. Let's set up our shrink wrap. So I have my plane, right? And I have a whole load of points and I need to bring Suzanne into my node tree. So I'm going to bring in Suzanne here. I'm going to set her to relative and I'm going to plug my geometry into my target because she is 
what we are shooting. Because she's directly below, we can set our ray direction to minus one. But of course you could set this to anything, or you could even use things like normals or noise. Do whatever you want. You can set this up and experiment however you want. The ray length is 100 meters, and in this case we could get away with one meter, but 100 is fine. It basically is just how far will it calculate before it stops and says this is not a hit. Now we're not interested in is hit, we are interested in hit position. So we want to set the position with a geometry set position node for our grid to the position on Suzanne. Now everywhere that we have missed the mesh, we can see that this has just gone to zero. So I actually want to do my is hit into the selection as well. And what that does is it basically says if there's no hit, then it's not going to move anything. And you can see now that while we are below the mesh here, we actually have this. I can also use this offset just to make it a bit more visible for you. But you can see that we are shrink wrapping onto that surface there. So one example of using the attribute to transfer an attribute directly is for doing something like transferring the UV map from a plane onto an object. So in that case, you could use your group input, like so, plug into that attribute, which I would set to a vector, because I'm interested in the vector, and then I would come into here and rename this to, for example, UV map. So what's happening now is I'm transferring the UV map from Suzanne, I would have to output that like so because we don't have any writing UV maps, we can only write a vector, so you'd have to pass out the vector to use separately. So that's just an interesting way of manipulating the raycast to do things. Other ways that I've used it in my toolkit would be for calculating points inside a mesh. So in this case, I can generate a whole load of points and I can find out which of those points exist inside a mesh, so that's a really useful technique. And we also have things like the shrink wrap like we made today. I think you can probably understand now why Raycast is such a useful node because you are using rays to be able to read another surface and also be able to read attributes from another surface which is a very powerful way of working. I hope you'll have a play because Raycast is super fun to work with and opens up just so many options. It really is like the attribute transfers big brother. Have fun with it and I'll see you in the next one.